Hi, I'm Lisa. The more English expressions you know, the more confident you're going to feel about your English. In this video, we will learn many useful expressions that you can use in a professional environment when you're speaking English. We will continue our series of listening to native speakers and analyzing how they speak. You will listen to a conversation that I had with a native speaker and then I will teach you the meaning of the expressions that he used. These are expressions related to his profession. And I will give you other sample sentences so that you can really master those expressions and feel comfortable using them yourself. This video is part two of my conversation with Ross, who works in public relations. He is a media specialist and he has a lot of experience related to how to communicate effectively in media. He has a very interesting job. In this video, he uses a lot of expressions that I think you will find valuable. These are expressions that people use every day at the workplace. Let me give you a few examples of how a non-native speaker might say something and then how a native speaker might say that. And these are expressions that you will learn later in this video. For example, a non-native speaker might say, I'm going on three job interviews next week. But a native speaker might say, I have three job interviews lined up for next week. So a native speaker might use the expression lined up, which means planned or scheduled. A non-native speaker might say, he's not qualified for this job. But a native speaker might say, he doesn't have the skill set for this position. A non-native speaker might say, we must deal with this issue very soon. But a native speaker might say, this issue is time sensitive. In the video that you will watch now, Ross talks about how long he has been in the PR field and PR is public relations. And he talks about how he started working in that field. Let's listen to him and then I will come back and I will teach you the expressions that he used. Uh, I've been in the PR field since I was about 22, um, so about eight, nine years now. The way I got into it actually was by accident. I was trying to be a sports journalist and a sports writer, but the job I had lined up backed out on me at the last second. So I went on to Craigslist and I found a job for marketing. They did a lot of public relations and things like that. And I really learned that I enjoyed it and had a lot of the same skill set as writing and being on deadline and things that I was really strong at. So I decided that I wanted to go that direction. And from there, I found a large international agency that wanted an intern. I started as an intern and moved my way up into more glamorous brands and more glamorous work. You don't start at the top, but you got to work there over time. Was your bachelor's degree in? Journalism. Journalism. Mm -hmm. So you're a good writer. Yes, uh, magazine journalism. I wanted to be a sports writer at Sports Illustrated. I worked there for a little bit. Um, I worked at Bleacher Report as well, covering the NBA and other sports. Um, and that was my passion, but after a while I decided a lot of the skill set that I liked about writing and being a journalist was featured heavily in PR, but it was not as time sensitive, it was not as uh, disposable as I like to say, because there are a million people who want to write. The supply is so high that it's overwhelming the demand. Most companies and most brands want to have a certain message put out there, whether it's buy our product or our product is be different because of X, Y, or Z. And it's my job to make sure that the person who represents the company says those things correctly, says them in a positive tone, and make sure that they are delivering whenever they're speaking in a public fashion. Ross used the expression in the field. Uh, I've been in the PR field since I was about 22. Ross said, I've been in the PR field since I was about 22. And to be in the field means to be in that profession. So a field is a profession. And PR is public relations. So you can say to someone, how long have you been in the field? Or what field are you in? And that means what is your job? What profession are you in? Let's listen to how he used the expression to get into. The way I got into it actually was by accident. He said, the way I got into it actually was by accident. To get into it is to get started in the field, to enter the field. So you can say to someone, how did you get into that field? 
You can also say this, I got into it because my father is in the same field. Or my older brother got into the field first. In the next sentence, he uses three different expressions. He uses to line up, to back out, and last second. Let's listen. I was trying to be a sports journalist and a sports writer, but the job I had lined up backed out on me at the last second. He said, I was trying to be a sports writer and a sports journalist, but the job I had lined up backed out the last minute. Let's look at lined up. To line up means to schedule something, to arrange something, to plan for something to happen. So we can say, I have a few projects lined up for next month. We've lined up some excellent presenters for our next conference. And we can also use it in a more casual way. We can say, what do you have lined up for this weekend? And that means, what are your plans for this weekend? Ross said he had a wonderful job lined up, but they backed out. But the job I had lined up backed out on me at the last second. And what does back out mean? To decide not to do something you promise to do. So the company backed out. They didn't keep their promise and he didn't get the job. We can say to someone, don't back out, keep your promise. And very often this expression is used with the preposition on and then a pronoun, for example, to back out on him, on her, on me. So you can say, they backed out on me. They didn't keep their promise. The next one you probably know, the last second. Backed out on me at the last second. We also say the last minute or the last moment. They all mean the same thing. When driving, don't wait until the last second to step on the brake. Let's listen to Ross's pronunciation. Let's listen to how he pronounces went on. So I went on to Craigslist and I found a job for marketing. He connects the two words and he says went on, went on. He doesn't pronounce the T. That's really common. When we have an N plus a T plus a vowel sound, we generally eliminate that T. I went on Craigslist and Craigslist is a website for finding jobs and housing and a lot of different things. Let's listen to the way Ross used the expression skill set. I had a lot of the same skill set as writing and being on deadline and things that I was really strong at. He said it had a lot of the same skill set as writing and being on deadline and things that I'm really strong at. A skill set means all of the different skills that are needed to do a particular job well. You can say he has a very diverse skill set or he has the right skill set for this job. And what skill set is required for your job? A journalist needs to be on deadline. We use the preposition on, being on deadline. And being on deadline and things that I was really strong at. And that means finishing a job on time. Journalists are always working on deadline. Does your job require you to be on deadline? With the next expression, we need to use the preposition at. A lot of my students make a mistake on this one and they use a different preposition. We say to be strong at something or to be good at something. For example, you can say he is good at math. Be careful about this one. It's a common mistake where people say in or on instead of at. So you can ask someone, what are you good at? Or, what skills are you strong at? Being on deadline and things that I was really strong at. Listen to the way he used the expression, moved my way up. Started as an intern and moved my way up into more glamorous brands and more glamorous work. He said, I started as an intern, but I moved my way up to more glamorous brands and more glamorous work. To move up means to get promotions or to get better positions. And very frequently, we use it like this. I moved my way up. He moved his way up. She moved her way up. And you can say, she moved her way up the corporate ladder. That's a very common expression. Listen to the way Ross pronounced, I wanted to be. I wanted to be a sports writer at Sports Illustrated. We generally don't say wanted. We say wanted. I wanted to do it. 
I wanted to go there. I wanted to be a doctor. Ross wanted to be a sports writer. Listen to the way Ross uses time sensitive. But after a while I decided a lot of the skill set that I liked about writing and being a journalist was featured heavily in PR, but it was not as time sensitive. Ross was explaining that working in PR, in public relations, is not as time sensitive as being a journalist. If something is time sensitive, it must be done by a particular time. There is a deadline. It's only relevant for a short period of time. It's only good for a short period of time. It's time sensitive. These time sensitive documents must be signed right away. I saw this next sentence on a website for an online store. It said, if you have any time sensitive needs, we offer expedited shipping. Let's listen to the way Ross used supply and demand. He said the supply is overwhelming the demand. Because there are a million people who want to write. The supply is so high that it's overwhelming the demand. Ross said there are too many journalists, but not enough jobs for the journalists because the supply is overwhelming the demand. There's not enough demand. We can also say the supply is greater than the demand. Normally, there are price drops at the beginning of the season because at that time, the supply is greater than the demand. Let's listen to the way Ross used X, Y, or Z. Or our product is be different because of X, Y, or Z. Ross said, our product is different because of X, Y, or Z. Be careful, in British English, they say Z, but in American English, we say Z. Did you know that? When people give an example or a hypothetical argument, they say X, Y, or Z. Let's listen to the way some people used it. If I were going to start a business, I would do X, Y, or Z. What is this going to mean for her if I do X, Y, or Z? Let's listen to the way Ross used fashion. He didn't use it in the more common meaning. He said, in a public fashion. And it's my job to make sure that the person who represents the company says those things correctly, says them in a positive tone, and make sure that they are delivering whenever they're speaking in a public fashion. He said, when they're speaking in a public fashion. In this case, fashion means a way of doing things in a particular way. You can say, for example, let's try to discuss this in a civilized fashion, in a civilized manner. Instead of saying, we'll need more order next time, you can say, next time, we'll need to do it in a more orderly fashion. You learned a lot of expressions in this video. In order to memorize them and to be able to use them yourself, I suggest that you watch the video again and when you learn the expression, pause the video and make your own sentence. Make yourself use it. Say it out loud. You're more likely to remember it that way and then your knowledge will not just be passive knowledge, it will be active knowledge. And active knowledge means you will be able to spontaneously use it in English conversations. One of the main differences between non-native speakers and native speakers is in the expressions they use. Native speakers use them all the time. So in order for you to be able to understand native speakers, I recommend that you listen to them and every time you hear a new expression and you're not sure what it means, look it up. Look online, search for it, find out the meaning, and then try using it yourself for your own situation related to your own life. That's a very effective way to make progress. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so. Thanks for watching and keep practicing your English. To learn all of the rules for a good American accent, you can buy my online video courses at accurateenglish.com.